When I started this channel, I made it a goal of mine to look at all the Spongebob video games for the PC that I grew up with. Most of them were made by an old company called AWE Productions Inc. This was a company that made many children's games in the early 2000s, often for franchises owned by Nickelodeon or similar companies. Their Spongebob series started out as a few original titles, Operation Krabby Patty and Employee of the Month, but they would later adapt console games for the PC, such as Battle for Bikini Bottom or Lights, Camera, Pants. Now that we've gone through their entire Spongebob series, I'd like to give an overall evaluation and share some of my own opinions. Since I grew up with these games, I'll try to base my rankings off a combination of how I felt as a kid and how I feel looking back as an adult. Again, this is just my opinion, and I'm fine with people thinking differently. These games mean a lot to some of us, and no matter how I rank them, that doesn't change the fact that someone else found it meaningful. Seriously, if you love a low-ranked game, keep loving it no matter what I say. They're all great in their own way. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So right off the bat, something might come as a surprise to some people. For the lowest ranking, 6th place and D tier... I'm going to say Nighty Nightmare. My biggest issue with this game is that it really should have been better than it was. It was AWE's last Spongebob game, and it came out right after a few highly expansive titles. I'm not sure why they opted to make this one three chapters long with only two mini-games in each. Coming into this one after their previous games was a bit of a disappointment. I honestly expected more from them. I couldn't find a source for this, but I heard someone mention that the game was rushed to completion because AWE was in a financial crisis, hence why it was named Nighty Nightmare rather than Creature from the Krusty Krab like its console counterpart. Though it was called Creature from the Krusty Krab in some releases, apparently the rename would fool people into thinking it was a new game and boost sales or something like that, I don't know. Still, even if it is just speculation, I would totally believe it. This game feels really rushed for what it is. Rather than giving us a bunch of stages, they gave us a few stages that can take ages to complete, mostly because you're just wandering around in the dark for most of them. I can't stress enough how much better this game would have been if they just included a map in some of these levels. The Spongebob stages are especially bad. Why do you drive so slowly in the cool, fast-paced racing game? And you can spend hours trying to figure out the stealth mission because the map is so big with absolutely no indicator of where you're supposed to go. Then if you die, it makes you even more lost. If these were just a few stages in a much bigger game, I'd be more forgiving, but with how small it is, they take up almost half of it. Also, one thing I've consistently praised throughout the AWE series is how smoothly they were able to blend the 2D and 3D animation. However, I can't really say the same about this one. The animation feels a little uncanny, honestly. I can't exactly tell why, it just seems off. And look at this cutscene, it's a mess. And so... It is finally come to this. Good against evil. Go ahead, make my day. Even the animation at the title screen looks off. I do like the Patrick and Plankton stages in concept, but at most, I just find them okay. Plankton's first stage also kind of comes down to just blindly wandering around and hoping you find something. Honestly, I'd be more forgiving of this game if it were AWE's first one, but because it was the last one and they had already impressed me a few times, it just disappointed me. And that brings us to the next game in our ranking. In fifth place, we have Operation Krabby Patty. Many people adore this game and find it really cute and nostalgic. I see where they're coming from, but even as a kid, this was my least favorite in the series. I remember being disappointed that the right side and wrong side stories didn't have different games, and I also remember being critical of the story even at a young age. I guess that's why I get for growing up with Bionicle. Not to mention, the cutscenes are really, really weird. Hey Patrick, why do you sound like Willy the Anchovy? Because it's really me! Again, I'd be more forgiving if these were part of a bigger game, but because it's so small and short, the things I don't like take up the majority of it. I also have a serious issue with bugs every time I play it. I'll never forget the one that kept me from playing the final mission on the right side. 
The minigames themselves are fine, but they make you replay them three times with increasing difficulty, even more times if you lose or have to quit, and they grow more and more frustrating to the point where I don't even want to touch them again. The stories are also bizarre. The right side makes no sense at all, and I can never forget how losing your permit right after the driving stage makes all that effort meaningless. Also, why are your allies attacking you in the first mission? They could have at least reskinned them to be something else. I would have appreciated that little bit of extra effort. All that being said, I like a lot of the humor in the game. Some of the jokes can get decently hard laughs out of me, and stages like the jellyfishing one or who cut the cheese are also pretty addicting. Though the cheese one makes no sense whatsoever. How does collecting cheese determine whether or not your friend reaches the surface? Okay, let's just move on. Again, this game is cute and nostalgic. I appreciate its charm and the fact it was AWE's first game. That's why I would rank it higher than Nighty Nightmare. Still nice to go back to every so often. Now moving on to the C ranking, in fourth place, I'm going to give it to Battle for Bikini Bottom. I think of all the AWE SpongeBob games, this one is the most okay. Not mind-blowing, but not exactly bad either. As a kid, I didn't like this one so much. This came out right after Employee of the Month, and in my opinion, the style of that one really worked. It was just too short and needed expansion. However, this game went right back to the minigame compilation format that Operation Krabby Patty had. But this time, it was a lot longer and had more care put into it. Because it's so much longer and more involved than the ones I've ranked before, I can forgive some of the not-so-good elements in this game. I'm sure we all still have nightmares from that terrible Hall of Arms stage. To this day, I still have no idea how it works. The Mermelaire chapter is also the bane of my existence. It has two almost rage-inducing games that don't even follow their own logic most of the time. The Chum Bucket is also really frustrating to play through, but it did give us a not-so-subtle sex joke. Just too big, it's too much! Don't worry, SpongeBob, size doesn't matter. <laughs> That being said, I really like the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. The platform stages are really fun, and the Mr. Krabs one is my favorite to go back to. Downtown Bikini Bottom and the Kelp Forest are also decent. Overall, it's a fair game, but one thing I really don't like about it is how the individual chapters don't have endings. You don't get cutscenes of you resolving the conflict or anything like that. The final stages just go on until you quit. It makes it seem a little incomplete. And now we're halfway through the list. The next game is an A, so for the sake of filling that vacant B rank, I'll include an honorable mention just because I've also made a video covering it. This is where I'd put the Spongebob Teaches Typing game, not made by AWE, but often lumped together with them anyway. It's fun, it has variety, and it's effective in teaching people how to type. I feel like even as an adult, my typing skills improved from playing this. It gave me way more than I expected from a game like this. My biggest criticism has got to be Mr. Krabs' voice actor. He sounds so glaringly different from Clancy Brown that it's kind of distracting. Does it make money? Come and get it! Well, I'll be! I wouldn't mind it if they didn't give him so many lines. Did they seriously have to make him the narrator of the game's menu? Overall, great for what it is. However, there's one last thing I have to say about it. I don't care what the title says, I strongly remember this being called Spongebob Teaches Typing, and I will stand by that for the rest of eternity. I'm right, the game's wrong. In the A ranking and third place overall, I'm going to award Employee of the Month. This and Operation Krabby Patty are the most widely known of the AWE series, and I'm happy this one gets some amount of recognition. It's like an actual adventure through the SpongeBob universe for four chapters. The chapters play out like four different episodes that tell an ongoing story, and all four of them are burned into my head. I love how much the game lets you explore different parts of the sea like Rock Bottom and Bottoms Up. I don't even mind visiting Bikini Bottom for two different stages. The dialogue is also heavily improved on from Operation Krabby Patty, and a lot of the jokes are seriously funny. I loved this game as a kid, and I still love it as an adult. Also, the original aspects keep me wanting more. I want to see more of Marlin and the Rock Bottom lore. I want a series that takes place in Bottoms Up. Waverly Hills is such a cool location that should be explored more. This game adds so much to the Spongebob franchise in terms of original characters and settings. It's an incredible journey for Spongebob fans in every possible way. However, there are a few drawbacks. It's kind of short, and as a kid, I always felt a little underwhelmed by how little there was to do. Once you beat the game, you've kind of seen it all. 
There are a few mini games here and there, but only one applies to the story and all the others just kind of exist and go on forever. A nice touch, but I wish there was more to do. Luckily, this next game has the same format as Employee of the Month, but has a heck of a lot more you can do. First, I have to mention, for these two S ranks, it was extremely close. Even now, I'm not so sure if I agree with my final decision. I might completely change my mind in a month or so. But for now, this is the order I would rank the final two. Coming in second place as our first S rank, Lights, Camera, Pants. Without a doubt, this is easily AWE's biggest Spongebob game. There is so much to do and so much to explore in this universe. You're trying to gather a cast for a movie, so you have a choice of which characters get to be in it. It's nice to see the different combinations of your finished product. It adds a sense of choice to the adventure. On top of it, this game combines both minigames and the point-and-click format, making it the perfect accumulation of everything AWE made before it. The minigames themselves are a ton of fun, and they even found ways to get creative with them. For example, the Fry Cook Quiz uses the dialogue options in a test-like format. This one really gets you exploring the ocean and helping all your friends to accomplish some goal. I also really like the original characters. Some of them are even characters from previous AWE games. You can travel to some of the most unique locations like the Flying Dutchman ship in prehistoric times, and you can even meet lesser seen characters like Spongegar and Kevin the Cucumber. Hi Kevin, hi Kevin, hi Kevin, hi Kevin. The minigames are also really fun to go back and play, even if the controls can seem a little weird sometimes. Great as it is, it isn't entirely free from Operation Krabby Patty writing. What was that? Oh no! Hey, where are you going? Ah! It's a mutiny! All hands on deck! Mad your stations! I'll head over to the ectoplasmic container. Regardless, it's fantastic and would have been the perfect game for AWE to end on. A grand accumulation of everything the series had built up. Lots of great memories with this one. And now we're on to my personal favorite of the AWE series. Like I said, it's only the winner by a hair, so I could change my mind in the future. But for now, I think I can say this one has made the biggest impact on me, and I have a hard time criticizing it. In the number one s rank position, the award goes to the Spongebob Squarepants movie. Just the look of this game fills me with such a strong sense of joy. It's a lot more linear than Lights, Camera, Pants, but there's so much to see and do that it makes up for it. All of the stages are enjoyable to go through, the character dialogue is so charming, and to this day I have a lot of it memorized. The trench stage is one of my favorites from any Spongebob game. There's a whole backstory behind this place with a detective subplot that could be a whole Spongebob episode in and of itself. The minigames aren't quite as detailed as the ones in Lights, Camera, Pants, but they are a nice touch. I've also heard that some people don't like the pain in the backstage because it wasn't in the movie that inspired the game. I personally think it's a great addition. Again, it really feels like a whole episode. Even if it doesn't add to the story, it's a lot of fun to play through, and I really like the amount of world building that went into levels like this. The chiropractor storyline reminds you that you are, in fact, playing as a fish. And like in human society, fish society has its own share of issues. Should invertebrates be allowed to see a spine doctor? This level really asks the important questions. Also, let's not forget that this game gave us the greatest fictional character in all of media ever. I guess I might trade it for some fried ice cream. Seriously, something about him and his obsession with fried ice cream is so fascinating. The game can also get really creative with what you have to do to progress through it. There's so much happiness to be had here, and any criticism of mine would mostly be a nitpick. This and Lights, Camera, Pants were my favorites when I was younger, and adult me can say the same. These were so nice to grow up with, and no matter how unpopular they may be, I still love them. But the same can be said for everything on this list. I definitely had a good share of enjoyment from every single one of these games. Even the ones I ranked low are still nice to play through. I find myself going back to each of these, and I always enjoy myself when I do. The relics from the early 2000s, contents of a time capsule to remind us of a simpler time. While we may grow older and unable to experience these games again, nothing will ever take away the fun we had when we first played them. These can be parts of our lives that we carry with us forever. We never have to let them fade away. 
and I'll be here to remind you that they've always been there for us. And as far as this channel is concerned, we have not seen the last of AWE, and we certainly have not seen the last of Spongebob. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.